up guys? So a lot of people have been asking me lately about set rotation and how it works uh, or you know forcible this ban list or whatever. Uh, currently forcible does not have any ban lists and the way set rotation works is we play in a format called New Frontiers and New Frontiers lets you use the two most recent uh, clusters and every cluster has four boxes. So we currently have seven boxes released in Force of Will, uh, not counting Bingolf, which is kind of like the side set that came out uh, around the time the Alice dual decks came out. And so um, the first four boxes of the Grim Cluster are considered the Grim Cluster, and that's the one we'll be losing because if you play with the two most recent ones, the second, the third cluster's first box comes out, that's considered the, the second most recent set, and then the first most recent set would now be the Alice Cluster instead of the Grim Cluster. So uh, I wanted to be showing off some of the staples from every set, but there was a lot I found through looking through my folders and trying to get all the cards I thought were really, really important. And I didn't want to kind of speed through the video, so I thought I would just make it in five different parts for the four boxes plus Vingolf. Uh, I might just throw Vingolf into uh, Millennia of Ages since Millennia was like a half set. But for as of right now, it's just going to be um, different videos for each set. Uh, of course, I'm going to be starting off in like uh, chronological order. So it's going to be from like uh, CMF to Tower um, to MPR and MOA. And so with CMF, uh, the most important ruler I think we're going to be losing is Kaguya. Um, I think Kaguya has always been really, really, really underrated. Um, when I first made Stealth Kaguya, uh, I was repping the deck for forever and uh, nobody really like gave it much mind until recently where Executioner came out. Everyone was like, kind of like, oh yeah, we should play Kaguya. And I was like, you guys missed out on like, you know, the prime of like the start of the deck, like when it was like the most fun to play. And there was a lot of people that were, you know, like repping it with me and I was really happy to have those people there. Um, but generally like a lot of people just sleep on Kaguya and I think it's it's not a good idea because she's really 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 good. It's one of those rulers where I feel like um like for example I didn't put Grim here because if we get more Grim uh fairy tales in the next set it's obvious he's going to be good. But um with Kaguya it's one of those cards where if we didn't rotate out or if somehow they were to reprint this or somehow introduce rulers in uh newer sets or make like an eternal format, whatever the situation may be uh, Kaguya is one of those cards where they have to be careful with what chance standbys and stealth monsters they make because of the existence of this card and I think that's really really strong like if you have to worry about a whole mechanic because of one card that's a really really big boost to like that card so that's the only ruler I had selected from the set that I thought was really important and I'm not even trying to be biased it just really was and then more importantly to me more than Kaguya which is like kind of surprising because it's just always been one of my favorite rulers is the dual stones uh we in this set we have the light red the black white uh blue green black green and the red blue and um i actually am one of those people who would be really really sad to see dual stones go a lot of people have been saying that if dual stones get rotated out it would be better for the game because it would be slower and you know people wouldn't be able to beat you so fast and whatnot and although i agree that it slows down the game it does something to the game um unless they replace it with like a proper uh, different engine of stones but it does something to the game that i really 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 hate in any card game and it's the concept of not having any creativity when deck building i'm one of those people who despise tribal decks like when Alice Cyrus came out and everyone was talking about running like four of every keeper and like four memory of disappearance and four orb of ifrit and like memory of flame just because it was like the other fire card in the set I was just like no please please stop doing this like you don't have to run every card that's released with a ruler in order for that ruler to be good like there's no point in limiting yourself that bad uh, for no apparent reason when you have so many more options like if, if Dark Alice comes out and the Shadow Memoria comes out and I read Shadow Memoria and it's not that great because all it does is like lower their attack, there's no reason to give up an entire color that I can get from a dual stone for a minus 100 boost. And a lot of people would be like, but you're supposed to use shadows and you know, shadows are good with Dark Alice. And it's like, well, not really. Like they don't particularly do anything for the deck that another card like Carmilla wouldn't be able to do. That's just extra destruction or zero, which is insane in that deck. And I don't know, I just, I'm really scared that if we lose dual stones, it's going to be a lot of like, you have Dark Alice, play Shadow Moria, you have Alice Cyrus, play Disaster Moria, you have uh, so-and-so, you have to play their cards and their regalias and their memorias, and I feel like that's so boring, like what's the point of picking a ruler if your deck list is going to look exactly the same as everyone else's, so um, I don't know if that's just like a kind of like a tender spot for me, 
but I really don't want to miss the dual stones. I, I don't want the game to be uh, very tribal heavy. That's what got me out of Yu-Gi-Oh! Just because I couldn't see a deck where it was just like, oh, Cosmos are being really re uh, released, everyone plays Cosmos. Performer Pals are being released, everyone plays Performer Pals. Like, it was just the most like generic and boring thing I, I've ever seen in a card game, and I, I really, really don't like that. So I'm really pushing for hopefully dual stones getting reprinted. Uh, it kind of lore-wise, it would make sense because... Uh, the magic stones are kind of what they use in the world for power So if they go back in time where they revisit the world no matter what the lore might be It would still make sense for those rulers to still like resonate with these stones for power So I'm really hoping they get reprinted I, I think people might get mad at me for that because I know a lot of people are against dual stones But like I'm sorry I just can't like I can't lose what makes this deck so creative I mean what makes this game so creative and unless they replace it with something fine if they replace it with you know I don't know maybe uh, dual stones that like come and rest it so the game is still slow but you can play multiple colors I'm totally fine with that as long as I can play uh, multiple colors and decks and then um, Elvish Priest uh, Elvish Priest is like the first mana dork we've ever had I think it's just an amazing card it makes Alice's World um, or any reflect deck really that uses green really really good um, it went hand in hand with Gretel at one point uh, Gretel isn't seen as much isn't seeing as much play anymore uh, but it is still one of those cards that I'm sure people are going to be sad to see go. Uh, it's just really, really powerful, and it gets you another stone. If Split Heaven and Earth wasn't a thing, that was actually, like, Gretel was too good at one point because of that. Uh, Elvish Bowman. Uh, this isn't a card that anyone really sees a lot of play of, but it is a very heavily sided card. Uh, having a one-drop that can uh, continuously destroy additions on a 3-3 body is actually really good, and it's one of those cards that... I always consider when I think of addition hate, so I'd be really, really sad to not have this as an option. Um, I'm not sure if Force Will is going to do an eternal format, but if they do, you can also just take these videos as kind of like a, what staples you should get from these sets, because it's kind of how I see it. Um, all of the staples happen to be, of course, the cards that everyone's going to be sad to see go. So um, this video actually could be taken as like, you know, what you need to pick up if you don't care if the sets are going to be rotated out or you play casually with friends. Or even if you just like want to play till September with the cards because that's been one of my issues with set rotation. A lot of people have been saying like I don't want to use the older cards because it's going to get rotated out. But like it's April. Like it's literally April. We have so much time till September. I think it's extremely silly not to pick up these cards if you're going to be playing for like the next however many months. I think it's like five. And I, like that's like two sets worth of time almost. And I don't think there's no reason to like limit yourself and be like not that you can't win without them but... Like, there's no point to be, like, giving yourself a disadvantage against someone who might be using the older cards just for the sake of losing out on a little money because unless you, like, can't afford cards, of course, like, financially, if you're, you know, unable to pick up the cards, there's nothing wrong with it because there's nothing you can do. I'm not trying to, like, bash anyone for, like, not being able to, able to physically get the cards, but, I mean, there's people that I know, at least, like, at my locals at Core TCG, that will say, like, oh, I don't want to get anything old because it's going to get rotated out and, like, they, you know, will buy like 30 packs and I'm just like, I have no idea what, what the logic behind that was. Like, just get the singles you need and call it a day. Like, um, I don't know. Um, I don't think anyone should be avoiding these cards because they're getting rotated out unless it's like Cheshire Cat and it's like 30 bucks and you can't afford it. But if you have to pick up like a 25 cent Elvish Bowman, just pick up the 25 cent Elvish Bowman. Like, I, I don't know what else to say about that. And then uh, Pumpkin Witch, uh, this is kind of one of the other secret, like, scary cards in the deck. Every time somebody drops this on me, I actually start panicking and think, like, my life is going to be over. Like, my actual life. Like, I think, like, I'm dead. There's nothing else to it. Like, every time somebody plays Pumpkin Witch, I'm just like, how did I forget? How did I forget that this card exists? It's just one of those cards that just randomly OTK you without you knowing. They start sacking their whole board for all these monsters and just continuously flying at your face. And you just die. And it's, it's a bummer. And, like, it's one of those cards that... I actually kind of like, I've never played this card and I kind of want to because I want to see what it feels like to just rip out someone's soul. Like, use this dead horse or whatever it is, that's what you end up being to this, this witch's power. So, um, I'm going to be sad to see Pumpkin Witch go. And then Carmilla, uh, the original, like, Dark Faria slash Lucifer slash any kind of monster removal has to in the game. Uh, this card was really, really, really good in Abdul. People would just search it with Laura, be able to kill, like, a Hamlin, because, like, it was always, like, Abdul against Grimm. And in Dracula, even when people played this, it's like, if they happen to hit, like, a human, like a Gretel, you'd get, like, a free blocker because you would take control of it. And then you can, like, deactivate, uh, Dracula in the same turn, and it's just, like, the most insane, like, turn like five play ever it was just really really fun to see and um i'm gonna be like especially sad to see carmilla go because i still use that card in all my dark decks i think it's really really good 
uh, for some spells. There's Law of Silence. Uh, this isn't particularly a good card, I would say. I think it only really works in like Reflect because when Reflect stopped playing Alice World, they started trying to like splash like one of this in instead. And I actually agree that that works a lot better. Being able to just like set up your board, J activate and pass, and the second your opponent draws, you just stun them for the turn and they can't do anything and you just continuously swing in with Wybers just makes it really good. Like the one turn it buys you in a searchable aspect is really good. And it doesn't make your hand dead because you could just put it away with Reflex, uh, draw one, put a card on the bottom of your deck effect. So I think um, in a deck like Reflex, this is good, but I don't particularly think it's a good like splashable green card in general. And then um, I missed out on Granny for the Resonators. I don't know how it snuck in there, but um, Granny is, um, it's of course only good because of the little red, uh, the true Millennia that came out in Millennia of Ages. But um, it is one of those cards that does a lot for like a lot of different decks. Uh, for decks that were using like Yogg at one point, you can summon Little Red and Granny, and if you had like a first turn, uh, turn one Rasputin, you could just tribute all three for Yogg on turn two, which is pretty cool. Um, it was one of like the biggest blockers earlier on when Little Red came out because Red Rush was still pretty, like really relevant then as well. Um, it becomes like uh, just Little Red into Granny's tribute material for Haster, which becomes like a two drop uh, Haster with a seven five body that kills the card, which is really really strong as well. Um, there's just a lot Granny does. Also like the Bonsai Grim that came out at one point, people were using Bonsai Attack and just like pumping up all the little little reds and grannies on the field and just going for game. And it's just like a really interesting concept. Like Granny is one of those cards that uh, people don't think is going to be splashable in like red of course, especially with like the low stats for attack and no swiftness. But it actually does a lot and like it does a lot for incarnate decks. So um, I'm actually really like, I'm cool with Granny. I think Granny's cool. And then uh, Spiral of Despair. Uh, the first discard card that I fell in love with, um, when everyone was playing Abdul with like uh, four green, um, black, and four uh, red black, and they were using like Gretels to like ramp, I was the only one that was like, I'm not wasting my time using Gretel. I took out Gretels and I used like uh, Scorched Bales instead of the the red green and i just use spirals and it was so great to see like them trying to ramp and me just going spiral and your hand goes to nothing and you have like an elvish priest and a gretel on the field and i was just like i'm so in this i'm gonna crush them like it just felt really really good and um especially with kaguya when i was playing um kaguya and when skl came out you could like set merlin turn one they would like summon their elvish priest and like play two regalias and pass and then you would like spiral and then they would lose their two cards in hand or like they would have like one card left in hand and then you'd flip in Merlin and just kill the Elvish Priest. And it was like the best feeling ever. So, uh, so I'm going to be sad when Spiral leaves. I think Spiral is really cool. And then uh, Thunder. Uh, Thunder is so self-explanatory. But it's one of those cards I'm not too bothered by leaving. Because we do have Demon Flame. But I love Thunder. Especially after the whole Agni Kai um, uh, Alice Harris deck I made. Just like I've had so many moments where my opponent's been at like 18 life. And I've just been like Thunder... Thunder, Orb of Ifrit, add two Thunders to hand, Thunder, Thunder, and it just feels so good. Like, I, I know it's, like, kind of, like, not fair, and it sucks because, like, I'll be at, like, 600 life, and so they're totally winning, and they're at 18, and I just Thundered them four times, but it just, I can't help but, like, love that feeling. It just feels great. Um, I, I'm going to be kind of happy, though, that it's gone just because... I think red having this in split is just way too good. Um, being able to hit all of, like, hit me to face while all your monsters are doing that anyway is really, really annoying. So if they have to replace this with Demon Flame, I'm actually okay with that. It's not a change that, like, I'm, I'm, I can't adapt to. So even in Alice Iris, where the whole deck, like, revolves around Thundering, a, a, like, a bunch of times, I can just use the, the Demon Flames to, like, start clearing up the board and then just use the Verdani to push for damage anyway. So I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't think... I don't think losing Thunder is going to be like bad for the game, but it is like one of my favorite cards and it's like one of the only red cards I actually like because I've always not liked red. So um, I, I don't know. Uh, Thunder's kind of... I'm happy that we have Demon Flame. I, I'll just leave it at that. And then Dream of Juliet. Uh, this is one of the cards that nobody really uses, but it's one of those cards people keep considering. Uh, it's it's just a good card overall. I mean, it works really good against Gilapis, which not a lot of people are playing, but you know, it is an option. Uh, it destroys additions, which we don't see enough of in this game. I know we have Sukiyomi now and Bless Holy Wolf, but uh, the fact that this can't be a dead card because you could just use it to draw on your like draw phase um, if your opponent's not using anything feels really, really strong. Uh, I just like Dream of Juliet a lot. There isn't a lot of cards that like flicker and like return cards to the field or anything, so this is like our only option to it. And I didn't want to leave it out because um, it's, it's one of those cards that I actually consider quite often as well. 
and then Absolute Cake Zone. Uh, this is one of the cards that hasn't seen play in like forever, like even since like Keen Sense came out because people just haven't been using Gretel from even then. And I'm not too bothered with this, I just wanted to add it because it is one of those cards that like really defined a whole like era of Force of Will. Like when the game, the game first came out and it was so control heavy, Gretel and this card were like dominating the entire game. And um, we have Seal of Wind and Light and Wall of Wind and Keen Sense now, so it's not too big of an issue. Uh, if we lose like this Zeke's and Exceed, uh, it's it's not going to be a big issue because we have so many replacements for it. So I'm totally okay with that. Um, the next card is the only card I haven't seen a replacement for, and I'm thinking we might not need one anymore after rotation. But it's Robe of the Fire Rat. Uh, this card has like single handedly just become one of my favorite cards in the entire game. I've just grown to hate Red so much, and like. Like, if I get attacked by another Lancelot, I think I'm just gonna, like, jump off the nearest cliff. I just can't do it anymore. Um, I feel really bad because, I like, when Alice Iris came out and I made, like, that slow version where you just play kind of control-heavy and then kind of win late game, I felt like, oh, cool, this is, like, what Red should feel like, you know? It should have a bunch of removal, which is totally fine. And even if you're, like, spamming a bunch of Thunders late game to do, like, 20 damage, it's, like, totally okay. But having somebody play a Persia and then have it be equipped with the Necromancy that they got in the graveyard with Guinevere, which is like arguably like one of the best red cards in the entire game. And then they swing at you with flying, they give it plus two, so it's now like 1100 damage. And then you can't even like thunder it anymore because not only was Reflect going to plus two it if you try to thunder it in the chase of Necromancy, but it's just too high in stats. And it's like, you're going to take 11 and then you kill it and then you take... Um, five more, which is 16, which is literally, like, a Guild Array hit with, like, one less Magic Stone, almost. Like, like he gets to, up to, like, 20 when you have six fire, and it's, like, with five fire, he would be at 17, and this is 100 less than that, and it costs, like, three. And the fact that she has target attack swiftness and everything makes it that much, like, scarier, and then she can get flying, and it's just, like, and what bums me out the most is, like, because it's a use with Reflect, it's like, I've been considering using Burnt to Cinders instead of um, Flame of the Outer World because it just stops Persia and Rook Egg this format. I just think the, rem the removing from game is really, really strong. And what I noticed is like, if they have a Lancelot and I try to burn to Cinders in the chase of Necromancy, it goes to 8-8 eight, eight and it won't die to Burn of Cinders, whereas Flame would kill it. And then with Persia, if they give it Necromancy, it becomes... 9 6 and then if I try to burn to cinders and a plus 2 it would become 11 8 and then it would be right out of, out of burn of cinders range as well and that's just really frustrating to me I've actually been like because I use reflect all the time too so I'm not one of those people that say like oh reflect should get banned I don't think it should get banned um I just think that if there happened to be a few more changes to the card it would still be really really good but I think the most relevant change they could possibly do to reflect which is, it's not even the draw one effect that makes it really, really consistent, but I really think they should change the plus two, plus two to either plus two and zero or just plus one, plus one. If it was plus one, plus one, every single card that adds up in the game to kill a card would be like totally fine now. If, um, if they have like a Cthuga and it's going to get like uh, a Necromancy and it's going to go to seven, seven, um... Well, actually, with plus one, well, that that's the plus two version. So if, if you can only plus two a card, like, Thunder would still kill Cthulhu before it got pumped up by Reflect because it would just go to seven and stay five. Uh, Lancelot, um, it still remains a problem with the plus two, plus two zero because it could still use its uh, effect at a thousand to do 700 damage. But if it was plus one, plus one, um, you would have a Lancelot even with Necromancy at 9-9, nine, nine, and you would have to pay like the additional red which would slow you down, which I think is totally fine, like it's still so much aggro, but it's not like free, you don't get like rewarded for absolutely nothing. And um, I think that would actually be really, really good for Reflect. I think if it's plus one, plus one, even if I have to deal with the, deal with the Cthulhu early game, that would be fine. I'll just leave it at plus one, plus one, even if it's out of Thunder range. Um, that way, if Necromancy is in the chase, you can at least still burn to Cinders, which you can still do now, but... Uh, it would just be, like, not a bad play. Uh, the Persia would be killable a lot more if they don't have Necromancy and they just summon Persia and swing. If they try to plus one, plus one, you can still thunder it because it would only have 500 defense. It just leaves everything in, like, the perfect kill range. Even, like, if, you know, you're talking about rotation and there is a uh, Demon Flame only. If they swing with a 8-5 Persia, Demon Flame would still kill it just alone on the 500 damage. So, 
Um, I think that's possibly one of the changes that would, um, I'm not sure if he needs it because like I said, like what makes Reflect the most annoying in a Red Rush deck is searchable thunders and split, which wouldn't be a problem after um, rotation and no Cthulhu, which means no early damage. And um, maybe, maybe it wouldn't need that change. But as of right now, uh, I think that's one of the things that they can add that would make it really fair because I think the only like the roll with the fire rat has become just so so good That's what I was getting to by the way. I had this like weird like um, Me totally going off topic was mainly just for rogue uh, I think just roll with the fire rat has become one of the most important cards to even main if you're using like reflect and you could just put it away because Red has just gotten so insane and they can push for so much damage and preventing like Persia and then killing her means you don't take the 500 either because it's last on information which it was blank uh stopping something like amino habakiri which is also one of the cards that's going to get rotated out uh that card is just free damage for red as well uh there's just a lot that seems like i guess it wouldn't be as strong if um rotation happens so reflect won't have an issue anymore but uh i really don't want to lose dual stones either so um this has just been coverage for cmf uh, these are all staples you might be looking into getting if you don't mind them getting rotated out in september uh, I still want to hear kind of like, because like I said, I've been hearing like rumors that I'm not sure if rotation is 100% going to be happening anymore. Uh, it's just may maybe just people like pulling my leg or something. I don't know. But um, as of right now, we know that rotations in September, uh, CMF, TAT, Millennia of Ages and NPR are all going to get rotated out, including Ving Off 1 actually. And so I'm going to be doing the coverage for uh tat on thursday so tune in for that if you guys do have any questions about any of this anything ro rotation related or anything that might be like uh ban list or anything like that rotated i mean that related please leave it in the comment section below and i'll try to explain any uh better if i haven't and answer any questions you guys might have and uh if you haven't subscribed make sure to subscribe because i normally put up a lot of content i haven't for the last two weeks but i've actually been um really really busy with either work or testing for the two AGPs that are coming up, uh, one in Vegas and then the other one in LA again, uh, which is really close to me, which is great. But um, I've either just been practicing a lot and infinitely making new decks and just taking them apart, putting them together. So I don't want to film anything that doesn't work. Um, I still haven't like nailed the Kaguya list, so I don't want to be able to put a bad one up. So I might have to work on that a little bit as well. But um, yeah, normally I put up a ton of content. It's just, this is like the first two weeks I think I've had where I haven't filmed anything. So bear with me, please. Uh, thanks for all the people that can consecutively watch. Uh, oh, if anyone liked the playmat, I'll have a link to it in the description. Uh, it's one of Amanda Lapalms. We just actually got it at Core. Um, you probably already saw it on the Facebook group, though, but I'll put up a link for it. And um, yeah, I'll definitely catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.